Well, good morning. Welcome to the Sunday devotional for today. I'm Jamie, and I'm glad that you could join us today. Uh, we're going to be continuing in our fourth week of our spirit and truth emphasis on worship and what having a life of worship is all about. And as we dive into that today, uh, one thing really came to mind. And I am really not a candle person, but if there's ever a time that I'm going to burn candles, it's probably October, November, December. Like with fall and with Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's probably the optimal time to have whatever holiday type fragrance you like burning in your home and just making that seasonal aroma that's so pleasing. And smell is one of the greatest human senses as far as memory and remembrance. So it's no coincidence that when we when we look at God's word, we'll see some parallels between aroma and uh, fragrance and the relationship between God and man. And so I really want you to keep the idea of a candle in your mind as we dive into the subject for today. The first time we really see this idea of fragrance in the Bible is right after the flood and Noah and his family land with all the animals on dry land and they build an altar. And what they do is they, they actually make animal sacrifice uh, right there at that point. And here's what, here's what the Word of God says. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground. Never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. So literally right after the flood, known as family, they have this uh, sacrifice that they present to God. And he's, he sees it as a sweet-smelling aroma, and he makes this new promise and then he really seals it with the rainbow as the signal of that commitment. Now what's interesting in the New Testament in Philippians, we see a very similar uh, concept happening. Paul is writing to the Philippians and he really breaks down what a life of worship is all about. He says, I have received more than enough and I am amply supplied that I have received the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So Paul is writing and he's saying, man, we're, we're partnered together and we're loving each other sacrificially and we're, we're a team and we're, we're bearing each other's burdens together. And because we're doing that, he describes it the same way that Noah's family, when they did the, the altar and the sacrifice, he's comparing it the same way. The same sweet aroma that God smelled at the animal sacrifice after the flood is the same thing that he smells when we are together in a life of worship. It's really cool when you think about it. And, you know, Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. So when we partner with him and we surrender our lives to him and we work together as the body of Christ, it creates a sweet aroma because it's a life of worship and it's pleasing to him. And it doesn't stop there. In Revelation, we see this uh, this picture of bowls of incense in the throne room of God. And these bowls of incense are the prayers of the saints. So think about that. Old Testament, the flood, we have the animal sacrifice, sweet aroma. God reconnects with new covenant with humanity. Sweet aroma. Paul, writing the Philippians, partnered together, united, sacrificially loving each other to support the work. It's a sweet aroma, pleasing to God. Revelation into the future. Bowls of incense that are the prayers of the saints. 
the, a life of worship is not just something functional that we do. It's actually a sweet fragrance that God himself takes great joy in. And it's very pleasing to him. And here's what's interesting. He paid the ultimate sacrifice. There's no, there's honestly no sweeter thing than what he did on the altar of the cross. Anything we do to pay that back or to acknowledge that. The fact that he even sees value in what we offer is grace in of itself. How is your fragrance today? How is your life of worship? Is it a sweet aroma? Is it loving sacrificially? Is it united? Let's live our lives like the Philippians so that we may be a sweet aroma to our Father in heaven. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for this whole concept of a life of worship as being a sweet aroma. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that as we come to a conclusion in this uh, theme for this month, that we wouldn't just walk away from it thinking, man, that was kind of interesting and that was kind of neat. But Lord, that we would be changed and that we would seek to live lives that are a true reflection of living a life of worship. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>